Hey, it's Kier from DenverKidMagic.com, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to make your flying carpet illusion usable. If you've ever tried to perform this for kids, you'll, you know from the first time you used it, the kids lay on the floor, they look up underneath, they start pointing, uh, it goes downhill from there really fast, and you want to stop using it. Well, I worked out all the bugs on it and uh, figured out a way you can actually present this illusion so the kids can't see how it's done in most circumstances, and with a little work, I think you're going to find it's really worth it to make these modifications to your flying carpet Okay, well. the first modification I did was I put four screws into the Lazy Susan. I stopped it from spinning. If you're spinning your flying carpet, I think you're telegraphing how it's done because as the bar passes over, or the fringe rather, passes over the bar, that given uh, added to the fact that uh, the fringe spins a little bit with the centrifugal force that lifts up, it really reveals this bar terribly when you spin it. So please stop spinning it. Uh, I don't think it makes any sense at all to spin it. Uh, so I put four screws through the Lazy Susan. You could also just remove the Lazy Susan, uh, whichever you prefer. But I just drilled uh, four holes and put four uh, sheet metal screws through there, and that keeps it from spinning anymore. The next thing we're going to look at is the back of the flying carpet here. And you're going to see what I did was I actually made, a, I affectionately call this the Fu Manchu piece because it looks like a little Fu Manchu goatee at the bottom here. And I actually glued underneath, I fixed some pieces of fringe underneath there so that there's no longer this gap. If I didn't have this piece in here, when the kids look up underneath, they see this great big gap right here with no fringe, and it telegraphs that there's something going through it. So what I did, I'll peel some of this back here. You can see some of my other modifications. You can see I basically just stuck little pieces of fringe underneath there. And I did that by taking little pieces of fabric about really longer than they needed to be, and hot gluing them on a piece of fabric and then you can't see it in this picture but ultimately I folded that fabric back over and then I hot glued the whole thing to the underside of this bar so it's un it's a hot glued right along here and then it was way too long so then ultimately I just sheared it off to match the height of everything else okay so the next modification I made was I made a board that fits behind the flying carpet you notice it's the same height all the way along there. It doesn't have wheels on the back piece, but it just sits up at, at the same height as the platform in the front. And of course you'll notice my flying carpet has black glittery kind of cloth over the whole bottom. That's of course a modification I've done myself as well. And if we were to look at the bottom of this board, you'd see kind of what it looks like. It just has a, like an H shape on the bottom. See the H and that supports it. It goes behind like this and then there's a little piece to fill in the gap here as well. We want to remove anything that's going to telegraph that there's something supporting there and that's basically what that piece, this little extra piece does. So now from the front as I pull this board back as I remove the front board now, this is the the tan shaped board. Now this tan board um, is not the board that came with my flying carpet. I've replaced the other board that came with it because the board that came with it had this gap down here at the bottom. There's uh, like two semicircles cut out of the bottom of your flying carpet. So I've replaced that entire board so that there's no gap at the bottom. So now as the kids get down on their hands and knees and get close to this illusion and look up, they can't really see anything. They can't see a, an actual connection because that Again, that little piece I call the Fu Manchu piece is uh, covering the black bar. And the other thing I've built here underneath is a black board. And I'll show you this black board. It actually slides out. Now what you're seeing here is a sheet of very thin press board. It's uh, 14 by 18 inches. And it's got two blocks of wood to slide on either side of the rail. That's the metal rail that goes through the center that holds the weight of the child on the illusion. And this is just a wooden stick. Um, and then there's popsicle sticks under this end of it, just giving it a little bit of a gap. The popsicle sticks end right here. The dimensions of all this you're going to kind of have to play with. As you build it, you'll figure out what size to make everything as you assemble it. And then on the other side, the board is black. And there is a magnet, Gorilla Glued, right here. And this whole ensemble is going to slide inside 
of my flying carpet illusion. I pushed it all the way in now. And that magnet will hold it into place. And then that fringe is all gonna come out. And once that fringe is out, it looks pretty normal. It takes a little bit to comb it all out. And what that does is that keeps kids, when they're looking from the underside here, they're seeing a black bar. sheet. Underneath. If that board were not there, they would see this big black bar and they would see it running through the back of the fringe, right here where that, uh, that little extra Fu Manchu piece is right there. They would see that black board or that black bar running right out the back. But again, this is, their, this is the best perspective they could get as their kids roll on the floor or whatever, and they really can't for sure see anything. They can tell that this board is fairly close, but they really can't see anything supporting it. So that's pretty much, in summary, how you make it look good, and you can cover it from almost any angle. Naturally, if they get around too far on the side, they're going to see how it works. Uh, but as far as the front, if you keep the kids out in front of you in the audience, it doesn't matter how low on the floor they get, they can't see up under there. Now, I've made some other modifications here that I'll share with you that don't have anything to do with the angle issues. One thing I did is I Gorilla Glued a couple of magnets onto the tips of my swords. Um, mine came, I bought mine used, but mine do have some magnets right up under here, and I'm, I'm assuming yours do too. Little magnetic catches. But these swords, even though they're metal, they really don't catch that well. So with those magnets, boom, they're in there good. So little neoprene magnets in there. Um, the other thing I highly recommend is to have a cape or a cover so that after the show you can have the whole thing draped so that curious eyes and I keep it covered. If you keep, your, uh, keep this covered like this then after the show curious eyes don't uh, see for sure how it works. Now, another thing magicians like to do is to pass a hoop. I think it's a great idea. It shows that nothing is holding the child up from behind. And to just simply do what you might think of as a gooseneck move, even though there is no actual gooseneck. Now, if it's used on a long board, which is kind of what that gooseneck is used for on an illusion that has a gooseneck, it's because the levitation is long, the person is laying down. I think it looks a lot better when you're passing it over something long. So what I do is I have the child hold a broom. You could say it's Harry Potter's Nimbus 2000. You could just say it's going to make you lighter. It's a witch's broom for how, whatever you want to say. When you have them hold this broom, you can still do the gooseneck move if the hula hoop is large enough. This particular hula hoop that I have today is along the small side to do this with. Um, my other hula hoop just broke the other day, so I don't have the appropriate size on hand. But if you have a child hold this and you have a big hula hoop just like this, you can actually do the gooseneck type move just like this, and bring it over the child and the broom in one pass, or a double pass that seems like one pass, if you're just kind of doing that rotation as you go through. So I like the broom, it adds length to that, uh, to that move when you're doing the, the gooseneck type move. Another little tidbit I'd like to share is where to place the board. If you pull this straight back, it's okay, it does the job. But if you fold it like this, to half the audience, it looks like it's folded flat. It has that illusion anyway. And it eliminates any possibility to that half of the audience that there could be something large supporting it. And it's a subtlety kind of thing. Um, some people may not think it's folded flat and others may. But I think it straight, strengthens the illusion. Another thing is just to have it off center, period. Um, if it's very uniform like this, I don't think it looks as good as if it's pulled off a little bit off center like this. And again, I think folding this one side in almost completely, folding it in like this is about as flat as it's going to get because of the size of that bar. But from the audience's perspective, it pretty much looks flat. And I've looked at it many times, and it, it, to me it has a very flat appearance like that. So just something you might want to experiment with and see which way gets you better, better reactions. So. And my last tip is to get the kids off their feet. This is something you can experiment with. I tell all the kids, hey, this is a flying carpet. So what I need from you is I need you to create some airflow. Have you ever seen anybody on a flying carpet? Oh, the hair, their hair is always flowing in the wind, etc., etc. So I hand out all the kids a giant card, and I ask them to wave the cards like this, that gets them off their feet and makes it that much less likely that they'll peek up underneath. Because once one kid looks, they all go like dominoes. 
So that's just something you can experiment with. Personally, I don't think this is as necessary once you've made all these modifications because quite frankly now, I don't care if they look because they really can't see anything like they could before. Um, before I made these modifications, every time I used it, I cringed because I knew somebody in the audience was going to look under there and see. So put some effort into it. If you have any questions, drop me an email or a phone call or whatever, and hopefully I can help you uh, if I haven't made anything clear. And uh, good luck. Hope you enjoy it.